I always loved music. I wanted to play the accordion because everybody else played accordion on my block and I don't want to be different. I want to be like everybody else. But my parents said, uh, no, you're going to play the saxophone. I kind of said, what's a saxophone? Most of my life, over 70 years, I've been making music and uh, I'm so grateful to my mother and father who, who let's say, they pushed me into music because they didn't want me to uh, lay hard labor like they did. And so they bought me a saxophone. <laughs> first started playing uh, the saxophone, um, I didn't start playing saxophone, I started just making rhythms on boxes because you know, I love to hear uh, the music and relate to it in some musical way. So uh, I used whatever was available. When my father would have me wash his white walls, I would uh, do it with rhythm. <laughs> My mother says, hey, you got to play with everything? Just watch this, because I love music. My definition of jazz is it is an artistic expression of freedom. And um, it's in a response to people who didn't have freedom and this was a way to acquire it and share it with the world and say that it's the most important thing we have is freedom because we make we survive and thrive by making choices now a choice is going to be defined as something that you really chose not something you were coerced to do Improvisation, uh, we should start with uh, a definition. The definition comes from the Latin improviso, which means to make the unknown known. When you play, and true improvisation has to be in the moment that you're creating it then, not something that you practice and really sounds good, but it's not in the moment. It's not like I'm speaking to you now. I, I didn't prepare this, so uh, that's how you find out if it's true or not. <laughs> Well, improvisation, you have to shoot from the hip, do it on your feet, and straight from the heart, and just let it come out. And I think that's my, uh, my best trait, is I'm able to uh, trust my instincts and just lay it out there. Yes, I also uh, read music. Not enough to hurt me, none, but uh, I, uh, I love to improvise. Even when I'm reading, I'm sort of improvising. Uh, it's not exactly what's on the paper, it's my version of it. My heroes were Fats Domino and Little Richard, and uh, that's how I grew up. Most of all, Ray Charles. Um, and you say, well, not, they, none of those artists who have played the saxophone. Well, it didn't matter. It was the music that they made. Mama, don't you treat me wrong. Come and love me, daddy. Oh, that's all right. 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 All right
I started playing rock and roll is my real roots. Yes. And, but I did it with a, a jazz sensibility because uh, I really felt it. And so what came out, got through, it really communicated. These are some of the uh, memorabilia that I've collected over the years. I've been, I've been thrilled to perform and m make music. And so I saved everything from every performance. And this is book one of uh, 10 books. It's like uh, the Torah. <laughs> Here's a picture of my first band called Little Joe and the Juveniles. Uh, juvenile delinquents was a popular term then. We, we didn't say delinquents. Uh, I look through these pictures, I, I remember of the different bands I played with, the Quaker City Boys from Philadelphia, the Honeycombs from down in uh, the south, and I went down to uh, Atlanta and spent some time there, and that's where I met my, my first wife, Michelle, and uh, uh, Nat King Cole. He was headlining, we were in the lounge, he came to hear us, and hung out with us. And I met the great Ira Sullivan and with Sonny and Cher came into the club and got on the stage and performed with us. And I took uh, Edgar's place in uh, his, when he left to play with his brother, Johnny, Johnny Winters. And, and that's when I left for Miami. <laughs> Music heals, and when I perform, I'm reacting to the music, and um, if the music is happening, it makes me dance, it makes me uninhibited. I love to dance. I, I, you know, I admired, uh, when I started out, I admired people like Sammy Davis, because he was a, looked like he was able to do everything. He was a musician, tap dancer, uh, vocalist, and so I worked in all those, um, those fields of, of, um, of music performance. One time I heard Julian Adderley, also known as Cannonball, Cannonball Adderley, and I heard him, and he played alto in such a way that had that, that rhythmic feel that I appreciated, you know. There's, when, you, when you're swinging, you can swing easy, light, laid back, or you could be really hot, and Cannonball was hot. He had the funk.
two saxophones at once, uh, that's because I'm bisexual. Okay. Hey, you, you, I was you waiting for you to be my straight man. But, uh, bing. <laughs> so, uh, well, how did that happen? Because I, I, I heard Rashan Rolling Kirk, and um, he is the most phenomenal artist that I've ever seen. saxophone is um, the most, uh, next to the synthesizer, the most modern instrument there is. And uh, it really is the closest to a human voice. And so it becomes very, uh, if you were going to score a movie, a jazz movie, you would probably have it as a, as a saxophone. <laughs> I play music because I want people to like me, you know, because I consider what we do in jazz to be sacred music because it's about the truth and anything that can come out as a truth and communicate, um, uh, I've, and the stage we perform on, you know, I consider that sacred ter territory. Ladies and gentlemen, the love of my life, Kathleen Donato. Registered nurse in the daytime and at nighttime she sings with my band. Canta una bella canzone, non si può ascoltare, unforgettable. Unforgettable, that's what you are.
see. Now this cat, he's been all around. From Coconut Grove to Chi-Town. From the Jersey Shores, he found a sound. Nina Simone once said, hey Joe, slow down. Now he travels with a bag of sound. Soprano, alto, and he likes to solo. One of the cool sounds around. Joe's back in town. Now listen, most folks don't realize that we're twins. Yeah, we got the same father. But our mothers couldn't tell us apart. His name him Joe and my name me Bo. Yeah, he go over here. This one now. Joe Donato is back in town. He got a bag of sounds and he gonna put them down. If you're not ready, well he's ready. You better get ready, uh, Joe. This all you, baby. I, I love to write music because it's a concretization of uh, my uh, love of music and um, and if I if I could say that if you would ask me what's my favorite type of music I would I would tell you vocal music 
because it not only has all the elements of instrumental music, a melody, harmony, rhythm, all of that, but then there's the lyrics. See, the music makes you feel. You hear music and you feel. It's not about anything specific, but you feel something. But when you add lyrics, great lyrics, then that makes you think. One makes you feel, the lyrics makes you think because it's so very exacting. So I found the song that if anybody asked me, what's your favorite song? And it's called The Nature Boy. And the composer's name is Eden, like the Garden of Eden, Eden Abes. It was written in 1943. Wow. And uh, I, I couldn't think of any better lyrics and the music seems to give you that mysterioso feeling to it. Uh, there was a boy, a very strange enchanted boy. They say he wandered very far over land and sea. A little sad of I was he, but very wise was he. And then one day he happened to pass my way, and we spoke of many things, fools and kings. And then he said to me, the greatest thing you can ever learn is just to love and be loved in return. When you put that those lyrics together with to focus on the errors or the flaws. In other words, uh, sacrificing uh, the good for the perfect. You know, it has to be perfect, and if it wasn't perfect, uh, that's what I'm concerned with, you know. Uh, but that's many times what happens with me. But I'm trying to... Um, the perfection can come when, when it's the truth. You know, you're not looking for the applause. You're not um, looking for necessarily the perfection. Well, I don't know. It's it's a it's a conundrum of of sorts. Uh, not not complicated, but complex of what goes on. You know, my legacy is how I feel about my family and pride I have in my family and being doing my best to take care of the family. But right after my family is this. It's called the Miami Jazz Cooperative. It's a nonprofit organization and the reason I love it, it's not about me. It's for the benefit of uh, jazz musicians and we have almost 500 jazz musicians now under the banner of founders. <laughs> well, I'd love to share with you my uh, latest uh, composition um, and, and share it with the world. It's called Peace. And the lyrics are, If there's just one thing that I would wish to be for you and me is peace. In a world so very strange, in a world with so much change, we need one thing for sure, our peace. 
There were times in the past of our history where there used to be some peace, but that peace did not last long. That time has come and gone. Peace did not last long. Please never end our peace. All we need is peace. Peace. First of all, how's my hair? It looks beautiful. No, no, it's terrible. Humidity here. I can't do a thing with it. Not a bunch. No curl. Okay. Mm -hmm.